This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what it really looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like.
I've searched the world for a love that could fill my heart And nothing compares to the wonder of who you are Holy, all the earth singing Holy, all the angels cry Holy, Jesus, you Jesus, you exalt you and worship you right now in Jesus name amen how many of you guys are excited to be here this morning good morning true life welcome 
We're so excited if this is your very first time uh, joining us or if you're online with us this morning, we just want to welcome you. We're so happy that you've joined us here to worship and uh, grow in your spirit. I wanna invite all the third through fifth grade kids to come on forward here. We got Kiss Chrissy and Dell here this morning. You're about to have some fun and learn about Jesus and grow. You're gonna have a great time. I'm so excited. Well, while they're coming forward, I want to invite you to say hello to your neighbor, give them a high five, a handshake, or if you're comfortable with it, give them a hug, and then grab your seats and get ready for a great message. Good morning and welcome to True Life. Let's talk about what's happening in the life of our church. Step three of Life Track is happening tonight at 5 p.m. Life Track is all about helping you get connected to a spiritual family and finding your fit in ministry. Step three is designed to help you get plugged into an opportunity to serve at True Life. We're going to help you find the area that best fits your passions and abilities so that you can make a difference in our city and beyond. Kids Life will be open. 21 days of prayer and fasting is a powerful time of the year as we seek God first and dedicate intentional time connecting to the Lord in prayer. It continues this week with services at the church on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and Saturday morning at 10 a.m. A great way to stay connected with us throughout the week is to download our app. It's a great way to stream a service, take digital notes, or watch previous messages in our archive. You can also fill out a connection card, join a small group, or give online. Download our app today by searching True Life Church of Newark in your favorite app store. Now that you're all caught up on church news, let's get ready for week three of our sermon series, Restored. In church this morning, I'm going to give you another chance. Come on, are you feeling good? You're in God's house with God's people. Hey, if it's your first time, my name is Michael. I'm the lead pastor here, and on behalf of all of our leadership and staff, we are thrilled that you're spending the morning with us, and I know we have more than usual with the weather uh, joining us online on the other side of those cameras this morning. Would you all just make as much noise as you can? Help me welcome first-time guests and everybody watching online. We're glad you're here. And so excited to dive into week number three of our Restored series. Come on, we believe God's given us a word for 2024, that this is a year of restoration in, uh, in our lives and in, uh, in the lives of everybody who calls True Life home. Come on, y'all on board with that? Yeah. On board with that this morning and um, excited about uh, where we're going to go. I do want to just start off right up front with a, just a teeny tiny apology, because if you're anything like me and you're a little bit ADD, you're going to notice that our uh, furnace in this room is struggling to keep up with the cold temperatures, but I'm just thankful it's working. Amen. Just thankful it's working, uh, but it is a little noisy, so we've got just a little bit of accompaniment in the room. You all hear that? And then in the last service, like halfway through the message, it changed. It, like it took off, like something happened. We had lift off or something. So distressed. So I hope that doesn't happen again. But uh, just try to lean in, try to stay focused um, if you can. Before I get into the, uh, to the meat of the message this morning, I do want to remind you that we are in not only a new series to start the year, but 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're in a season of seeking the Lord and uh, giving him the first part of our year to see him move in, in powerful ways. And I, I got to tell you, um, we had to cancel yesterday because of the weather, but uh, I was just so encouraged, Pastor Perry, when I walked out here Wednesday night, and um, almost as many people as are in here right now showed up Wednesday night to be a part of prayer. And uh, so we've got two opportunities left this week, Wednesday night at 7, Saturday at 10 a.m., and I want to encourage you to join us, um, especially like if you find yourself even maybe a little bit intimidated by prayer week. We're not just turning you loose to pray for an hour. You're not just going to get lost in it. In fact, we've been walking through some models together and learning to pray together and then praying for needs. And then this past Wednesday, man, like God just showed up and we hung out and prayed for each other, prayed for each other's needs and, uh, and until, until we were all just tired, had to go home. And it, but it was just a, a powerful time in, in God's presence. And so um, we'd love for you to come out Wednesday night and join us. We've also got a very special guest sitting right down here on the front row. This week, you guys, we are launching a brand new piece of ministry here at True Life. Pastor Perry and a team have been working uh, for the last several months to launch what will be called Recovery Church on Tuesday nights. This is uh, uh, an opportunity for those who are 
kind of walking through just getting free from different types of addictions to have a unique church service uh, specifically designed for them. And uh, if God kind of stirs that up in your heart, make sure Pastor Perry knows that today before you go. But uh, we, we have a special guest on the front row. Pastor Max is a part of the Recovery Church movement uh, from all over uh, the... Why don't you stand up real quick, just kind of wave it already, let him know you're here. He's going to be here doing some training with our team today. And um, y'all check this out. This, this organization, I had to bring my phone just because there's no way I could remember all of this. This organization launched in 2010 with one recovery church location. Since then, it has grown to 60 plus active locations across the country. Y'all ready to hear this? Just in 2023 alone, in these recovery church meetings, over a thousand people made decisions to follow Jesus. Amen. Over 400 were baptized. Uh, over 2,100 people are attending weekly with 800 plus local church volunteers serving uh, in those meetings. And I just, I'm so excited because we know uh, addiction recovery is, is desperately needed in our community. There are so many people who the enemy has kind of been able to wrap his, his hands around and, and trap people in, um, in something that destroys not only your own life, but everyone who loves you. And so in Jesus' name, we're going to see restoration happen in those lives. Come on, everybody. And uh, what an honor to come alongside them and be a part of that. And so I want you to, if you would this week, just be praying for Tuesday night, especially as we launch that brand new ministry here at True Life. And um, I know it's not going to snow, so it's going to happen. All right. So, uh, so excited for that. Um, everybody look at the person next to you. Just tell them not too late. Not too late. Come on, just tell them not too late. Not too late to make 2024 your best year ever. If, y'all know what I'm going to say, it's your best year with? Jesus. Come on, if it's your best year with? Jesus, with Jesus. And so we've just been in this new series to start the year. Believe God gave us a word around restoration for 2024 and uh, excited to see where God's going to take us today. We've been working out of a passage in Psalm chapter 126, and it says, when the Lord restored, everybody say restored. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Come on, y'all, this, this was uh, written after the Israelites came back from Babylon, after their time of captivity in Babylon, and, and so God's bringing them home, and he's restoring their way of life. The word fortunes literally means our way of life, and I just believe in 2024 that that's what God wants to do for some of us, to get us back to the way of life that he already had for us, that is his plan for us all along. And they said, they say, it's so good, it was like we were dreaming. It's so good, it was like we were dreaming. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. It was said among the nations, the Lord has done what? Come on, the Lord has done what? Come on, I'm glad you don't serve a God who does mediocre things. He doesn't do medium things. He does great things. He does great things. It said, it was said of, he has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we, should be a space there, apologize for the grammar, are filled with joy. We are filled with joy. By the way, anytime you see an error on there, that's not our tech guy's fault, that's mine. They copy and paste from my notes for the screen. We are filled with joy. And then the passage transitions to a prayer. This is our prayer for this year. Restore our fortunes, Lord. Restore our fortunes, Lord. Like streams in the Negev, I wanna draw your attention to that this morning. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy, and those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. There's something interesting and fascinating that's happening in this passage that if you don't lean into it, if you don't study, you won't catch it. You won't catch it. And uh, I, I, I was curious about this streams in the Negev. Y'all, when you see details in the Bible, can I just give you a little Bible study top, uh, uh, tip? When you see details in the Bible, just ask yourself, what's that there for? What's that, why? Because God doesn't do anything on accident. He doesn't give us any detail on accident. Are you all okay? You good? Come on, man. God doesn't give us any details on accident. Okay? And so I was leaning into this. I was like, what is that anyway? If, it's, if God does this thing and they compare it to the streams of the Negev, what is that? And so I went and just, I just, here's crazy, complicated, high-tech way of studying your Bible. I Google image searched the Negev. And here's what it is.
How many know there are no streams there? That's a desert. I've been to the desert. I'm going to the desert this summer. I'm looking forward to it. How many, but there are no streams in the desert. If there were, it wouldn't be a desert. The Negev is literally desert. Dry, empty. There's nothing there. I'll prove it to you. I got two pictures. More desert. That's the Negev. So why on earth, in a, in a thanksgiving psalm, in a song to God, thanking him for restoration, why would they say, thank you, God, for blessing us like the streams of the Negev? Makes no sense at all. Unless, unless you understand what it's like to live in the desert. I have a friend who lives in the desert, and I was talking to him about this, and he said, no, you've got to understand, in the desert, you have something called a wash. And if you live in the desert, anybody here ever lived in desert climate? Anybody at all? All right, so you'll, you'll, you'll be able to verify my information, I hope. If you live in the desert, my, my friend, he said to me, listen, you, you can't just pay attention to the weather where you are. You also have to pay, atten the pay attention to the weather where you are not. Because the weather where you are not can have a sudden and significant impact on you where you are. He said, what will happen sometimes is there will be a rainstorm in the mountains and you don't even hear the thunder, you don't even see the rain. But if it rains hard enough, the water will wash down the mountains into the desert and we have these things called washes or streams that suddenly fill up and flood. Are you all catching this? So the streams of the negative, it's as if, what if, let me, just say, let me say it to you this way this morning, what if it's not always about what you can see God doing in front of you right now. What if he might be doing something in another place far away? What if the rains might be falling somewhere else, but suddenly and quickly and divinely, he's going to restore something where you are? That's what the streams of the Negev are. The, the rains would happen somewhere else, and all of a sudden, the streams would fill up and flood. And it and so what the scripture really is celebrating is a sudden and divine miracle of God. How many of y'all would like some sudden and divine in your life this morning? I know I would. That's what I'm praying for for you in this series. We've been talking about it. The first week we said, God, would you restore passion? And I hope it's a sudden and divine restoration for you. We, Pastor Perry, last week, come on, y'all. Did he not crush it? I mean, oh my goodness. Uh, restoring hope, and I hope for some of you is a sudden and divine restoration of hope. In fact, I heard some of the stories from some of you who were just like, man, I needed that so badly. I was, um, I told people on Wednesday night, I was, I had to travel last weekend, and so I was actually on an airplane. I paid the $15 for the internet just so I could watch church with you guys while I was on the airplane. And um, Pastor Perry's up there preaching, and I held it together mostly until my wife got up at the end of the first service, and she just it was so emotional, and, and then that just wrecked me when I saw her. And so they come to me, and they're like, sir, would you like a drink? And I'm like, actually, do you have tissue? I just need... I'm just kind of a mess on the airplane, and these poor people are probably like, what is wrong with this guy? Is he watching The Notebook or something? Like, I'm sure they were... <laughs> But come on, how many know God's going to restore some passion for us this year? He's going to restore some hope for you, for, for us this year. Some of us have kind of forgotten why we're here and what we're supposed to be doing. Then next week we'll talk about restored dreams. My prayer for you today is a divine and sudden restoration of passion, of hope, of purpose, and that you would begin to dream again about what God wants to accomplish in your life. And so today we're going to lean into purpose and God restoring purpose in our lives. I, I thought, let's start at an easy spot. Let's start with some common ground. Let's find out what purpose is. So I went to another great preaching resource. It's called the Dictionary. Y'all know it's okay to laugh in church, right? It's okay. All right. And I found two different, there's two different versions of this word purpose in the dictionary. Number, there's, first, there's a noun version, which has two definitions. It says, the reason for which something exists or is done. The reason for which something exists or is done, made, used, etc. Or, or it could be an intended or desired result, an end, an aim, or a goal. There, there's also a verb version of purpose, to set as an aim, an intention, or goal for oneself to intend or design. Do you know 
then in the eyes of God, there's both. When he looks at your life, there's a reason he made you. Say amen. There's a reason you exist. There's an intended or desired result for your life. And it's not just a noun. It's also something that's in action. There's, an, there's something that we... He wants us to get in alignment with him so that we can aim at accomplishing his will and purpose for our life. What if all of our goals could be God goals? What if we could get alignment with, in alignment with what God wants to do? What if we could get in alignment with his intentions and his design? And what I've found through the years is when, when I'm struggling or with people are, when people are struggling with, with purpose, they start asking purpose questions. A lot of times it sounds like this. Maybe you're asking this question right now. I've, I've certainly asked this before. So like, just who, like, who am I? Really, like, who am I? It's kind of this identity question. What, what am I, why am I here? Like, what, what am I, doing? anybody else ever been here? Can we just be honest with you? Like, why am I, what am I doing here? What, what should I be doing? And then the big one, the biggest one of them all. Is, is any of it going to matter? At the end of the day, is, is any of it going to matter? These are purpose questions. And if you find yourself wrestling with purpose questions today, I have good news for you. The same word God has given us for this year applies to purpose as well. And that is when we come back to Jesus as Lord, when we come back to his way of living, when we return to his word and his will for our lives, he will restore the purpose in our lives. Come on, say amen this morning. When we return to Jesus as Lord, surrender our agenda to his, then he will restore our way of life because he's a redeeming God. He puts things back the way he always meant for them to be. So when you find yourself asking purpose questions, and um, this message ended up going a direction I did not expect it to go. I thought I was going to give you like these, just this real practical how to find your purpose message. And I guess it is practical, but I felt like uh, the Holy Spirit just kind of steered it in a direction that I wasn't expecting. In fact, halfway through the day on Thursday, I just had to, I kind of stopped, had to stop, had to step away and just just was asking the Lord, like, God, what do, you, what do you want to do here? And it was actually Saturday morning that I finally felt like I was getting some clarity on where this was all supposed to go. And so I, we, we're saying, when we return, he will restore. And so I just have three returns, three ways that we return to the Lord so that we can have restoration of purpose in our lives. And so for when you find yourself asking purpose questions. Come on, one more time. Quick show of hands. How many have ever been in a season of life where you're asking purpose questions? Who am I? What am I doing here? What am I supposed to be doing? And will any of it matter? When you find yourself asking those kinds of questions, return, number one, return to the word. Return to the word. Come on, somebody shout at me. What is the word? The Bible. Yeah, not a trick question. Come on, we need the word of God to help us see who we really are, to see what he's asked us to do. You need the word of God to help you understand the way God sees you and what he thinks about you. And one of the most helpful passages in the Bible, in my opinion, one of my favorite passages in the Bible is James chapter one, verse 22, and it says, don't just listen to God's word, you must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling who? yourself. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and you forget what you look like. For some of us, that's not a bad thing. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and what? Don't forget what you heard. Then God will bless you for doing it. Y'all, the Bible is a mirror. James says the, the Bible is a mirror. It, it is, if you really want to get an accurate picture of yourself, then you have to lean into the scriptures. Lean into the Bible. Yes, I'm going to preach about reading the Bible at church. I know, I know that one's out there. I know that's crazy. I know that one's hard to, hard to expect. But how many know we need the word of God in our lives? 
We're not going to have an accurate picture of who we are without the Word of God in our lives. I've got a mirror up here on the stage this morning. Jared brought this out here for me. I've got, I've got a mirror up here. I don't, I, don't know how, I don't know how you handle the mirror. I, I, in our household, I've got to be really careful how to tell the story because I don't want to get in trouble. I want to be able to sleep in my own bed tonight. But in our household, there are, there are different approaches. We've got different people living in our house. There are several different approaches to how we use mirrors. I'm a, I'm a dude. I've got short hair. I need about 10 seconds with a little bit of gel in my hand. Come on, y'all. I am a glance and go. That's my, that's, my, that's my strategy when it comes to, I'm a glance and go. Come on, where are all my glance and go people at? Come on, some of you all, God even blessed you with, um, with not having to worry about hair at all. It's a blessing. Because you can really glance and go. You're like, did I get dressed? Yeah, I'm dressed. Okay, I can go. Come on. Come on, glance and go, baby. I'm a glance and go. But not everybody in my house is glance and go. Jackie, I don't know how this works in your house. Not everybody in my house is glance and go. There are some other people in my house who, if I'm honest, I don't, I don't fully comprehend what's happening. In fact, if you, if you come through the front door of my house, as soon as you come in on the right hand side of the wall, there's, there's like a decorative mirror. Anybody all have decorative mirrors in your house? There's a decorative, there's a decorative mirror there. Then um, we have a stairs. We go upstairs. All the bedrooms in our house are upstairs. Three bedroom house, go upstairs. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms up there. There's a little closet in the hallway for all of our towels and sheets and all those kinds of things. And on, on the inside door of that closet, we have hung a full length mirror for one of our household members. Full length mirror. That happens to be literally about two steps from a bathroom with a big mirror over the sink. Then a few steps away from that is the master bedroom and we've got one of those closets with the slidey doors. You all know the slidey doors? Both of those are full length mirrors. Then our dresser has a big mirror, and around the corner from that is the master bathroom, and over the sinks are another big mirror. How many are we up to now? Six. Six. Y'all, I have watched this happen in my house, where somebody starts at one mirror. Then they go two steps to the other one. Then they come into my room. And look at another one. Then they come into my bathroom and look at another one. Then they go all the way down the steps to the decorative mirror and they look at that one. Then they come back and they start the process over again. I don't understand what's happening. Because I'm a glance and go. But others look into the mirror more intently. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about this morning. Yo, has this happened in your house? Are you scared to raise your hand? And for all the husbands in the room, I just... I don't want to stereotype too much, but here's the other thing that starts happening is I start to feel some anxiety because at some point I might be invited into this process. I've been asked this, hey, which cardigan looks better? They're the same. They're both red. You are so pretty. No, this one's a lighter shade than this one. I need to know which one goes best on top of. You're so pretty. Like, I just, I just don't know. Come on, anybody else? You feel like this is dangerous territory. <laughs> but there's some, there's some beautiful ladies in our house. I've got an amazingly beautiful wife, an amazingly beautiful teenage daughter. I, I, I'm actually... I'm actually kind of in awe at their ability to not just glance and go, but to look. Everybody say it. Y'all, when we look at the Word of God, when we're, we're examining our own lives, when we're looking at the, the version of us that God wants to develop, come on, how many know we can't afford to be glance and go people? It's, it's actually good to lean into the mirror of God's Word and go, is that, is that who I am? Is that what He's asked of me? Is that supposed to be my response? 
Is that how I should speak to my, my wife? Is that how I should speak to my children? Is, is, should, should I let this anger be controlling me this much? Should, is, 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 are the choices I'm making in alignment with, with God's perfect will for my life? Come on, he's given you a beautiful gift in his word that allows you to come and look into the mirror and look carefully and intently to make sure that the version of you the rest of the world is experiencing is in alignment with the version of you that God had designed whenever he made you. The Bible is a mirror. Look at the person next to you and just tell them, God says you look good. He says you look good. <laughs> he says you look good. I'm so, I'm so thankful for a pastor who encouraged me to memorize scripture. One of the very first scriptures I ever memorized was Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, for the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than, any, than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. That word exposes there is not like the guilt, shame, you're in trouble, expose. In the Greek, it literally means to be able to rightly judge. In other words, when I, when I look at the word of God, it will separate what's good from evil in my life. It will give me the ability to rightly judge my choices, to steward, to spend my time on the right things. Come on, y'all to measure my influences and my relationships. I need a good mirror. You need a good mirror. When you're asking purpose questions and you're forgetting who you are and you're not quite sure who you're supposed to be, it's good to go back to the word of God and to get an accurate picture of who God says you are. Say amen if you're with me this morning. Here's the next one, and, and this is where I really felt like the message went in a direction. I, honestly, I didn't anticipate, but I just really felt strongly this is where God was leading us to go. Because I can, I can get clarity about what God wants by leaning into his word, but I can also get clarity by spending time with him. And so the second return for us to make if we want restored purpose in our lives is, is I want to encourage you to return to prayer and fasting. And I know what you're going to say. You're like, but we're in prayer and fasting right now. Why would I, what do you mean return to that? Well, some of us, maybe you haven't made the decision to participate yet this year. It's not too late. But more than that, what if in 2024, it wasn't just a January thing? What if God wanted to develop some rhythms in our life this year around prayer and fasting? You know, Jesus said, when speaking about prayer, he said, when you pray. He didn't say, if you pray. When the disciples asked him to teach them about prayer, he said, when you pray. What's the assumption? You're going to pray. It's not if, it's, it's, it's when. Then there's another time he's teaching about fasting, and guess what? He says, when you fast. So what's the assumption? You, you're going to fast. So Jesus uses this language that's like, it's almost this assumption that if you're serious about your spiritual development, you are going to participate in prayer and fasting. And so I, wanna, I actually want to invite you this morning. I don't, we've never done this. I, I can't believe we've never done this. I probably should have. But I'm gonna, I want to give you an invitation this morning as a church family. Let's stay connected to the heart of God. Let's Let's have clarity about who God says we are by looking in the mirror of his word, but let's also stay connected to the heart of God. Let's stay in his presence through prayer and fasting. And so I just want to call you, I want to invite you just to do just one day a month, 11 more days after 21 days of prayer and fasting, 11 more days for the rest of 2024. Let's just take the first Wednesday of every month and let's commit to prayer and fasting on that day. And let's just see what God does in 2024 as we develop rhythms of prayer and fasting. You say, I don't, I don't, what would that look like for me? I don't know. Maybe you fast lunch. Maybe you fast your lunch break. And you just go find time to be with the Lord. Maybe you fast a meal together as a family. Maybe, maybe you fast dinner that week, and, and then you just come to, come to First Wednesday Church together where we'll have communion and worship, and we'll study the Bible together. I, I don't know what it should look like for you. I know, I know some of us during this, <laughs> during this election year would benefit from fasting like some, some talk radio and some news. Because you're just constantly being fed with 
emotional triggers in hopes of ramping up ratings. And listen, that's not the thing in you that needs to be triggered. The Spirit of God is what needs to be triggered inside of you. And so let's just commit to a rhythm. Come on, y'all with me this morning? Let's commit to a rhythm of being in the presence of God through prayer and fasting. And I felt like the Lord led me to Joel chapter 2 where God speaks through the prophet and he says, blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem, announce a time of fasting. That's what I'm doing this morning. I'm announcing a time. Like we're going to do this once a month. And if that day doesn't work for you, maybe find another one. But let's just, as a, as a church family, let's just agree on the rhythms of prayer and fasting this year. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Gather all the people, the elders, the children, and even the babies. Don't make the babies fast, though. Like, I just want to say, like, don't do that. Call the bridegroom from his quarters and the bride from her private room. Let the priests who minister in the Lord's presence stand and weep between the entry room to the temple and the altar. Let them what? What are we going to pray? Spare your people, God. Don't let us, your special possession, become an object of mockery. Don't, don't let us become a joke for unbelieving people who say, has the God of Israel left them? How many know he has not left us? And the rest of Joel chapter 2 are promises that get fulfilled if the people respond to prayer and fasting. In fact, verse 28 is kind of fascinating. So, so he just starts listing promise, 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 if we pray and fast. Promise, promise, promise from God. All the way up to verse 28, which is a promise that Peter in Acts chapter 2 quotes verbatim when he explains to the people what's happening at the day of Pentecost. The Spirit of God falls, there's little flames of fire over everybody's head, they're speaking in tongues, this crowd gathers, they're like, what's going on? Peter comes outside and for the first time in his life, he opens his mouth and it goes well. And 3,000 people make a decision to join the church that day. That's a good first day of church. And he quotes this promise that's attached to prayer and fasting in Joel chapter two. And it says, then after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit. Come on, how many of y'all would love it if God would pour out his spirit on us today? I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men, and women alike. How many know if God is moving like that in your life, you're going to have clarity about who you are and what you're supposed to be doing? If we can go to the mirror of God's word and if we can be in the presence of God in alignment and tune into what his spirit is saying, how many know we'll find ourselves asking purpose questions a lot less? To get into the presence of God through prayer and fasting. And here's the last one. And this one is the most practical of them all. So we're going to return to the mirror of God's word. We're going to return to the presence of God through prayer and fasting. And then I want you to return, get back to discovering. Everybody say discover. And develop. Everybody say develop. Spiritual gifts. Get back to discovering and developing Spiritual gifts. Acts, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the final words of Jesus to his disciples. He says, listen, guys, something's about to happen. You're going to receive something. You're going to receive something. Power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you're going to be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So here's my question. If, if all of us are to receive this power and to participate in this. How many, just quick show of hands, how many agree we're all meant to be participating in this? We are, by the way. Then, my, then the next question is, well then, does it look the same for all of us? Like, are we all supposed to be preachers? Are we all supposed to be evangelists? Are we all supposed to be good at the same things? Of course not. Of course not. First Corinthians chapter 12, the apostle Paul says, now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities. Look at the person next to you just telling them, you're so special. You're so special. You got special abilities. The Holy Spirit has given you special abilities. He says, I, I want to talk to you about the special abilities the Spirit gives you, and I, I want you to have some clarity around this, not to understand them. He says, there are different kinds 
of what? Spiritual gifts. But the same spirit is the source. So God's giving this to all of us. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. We all have different gifts. Come on, say amen this morning. Come on, like Pastor Perry, I don't know where he went, but Pastor Perry and I, we have different gifts. If you're having a bad day, you want Pastor Perry, not Pastor Michael. Because Pastor Perry just sit with you, hug on you. I'm going to try to fix it. I'm going to be like, oh, well, you're just an idiot. Stop doing that. It'll all, be, it'll all work out. Come on, that's not very gracious, is it? I've met with married couples. They'll be like, ah, ah, ah. I'll be like, hold up. This marriage will be great if you both just zip it. Come on, Pastor Perry's better in those environments. Y'all know this because he has a different gift. He has, a different, he has different gifts. My wife has different gifts. She knows how to just keep things in order. I'm just all over the place. I'm, I'm ADD. She can order priorities. She, can, she remembers things, makes sure we stay on top of things. We all have different gifts. We all have different things that we're good at. Come on out, Michaela. Different kinds of service, Paul says. But we serve the same Lord a God who works in different ways, but is the same God who does the work in all of us. And so if you want to stay connected to the purpose of God in your life, then you're going to have to have some intentionality about figuring out what are the gifts that the Holy Spirit has stirred up in me? How do I identify those? And then how do I do something with them? So d d discover and develop your gifts. We have a process to potentially help you with that. It's called Life Track. If you were to come to step two, we walk through this whole spiritual gifts inventory. But I just want to tell you that's not the only way to do it. If you're in the Word and you're in prayer and fasting, you'll start to sense the gifts of the Spirit waking up in your life. Come on, somebody. And so I have some homework for you. In fact, I've never, I don't think I've ever done this in the history of our church. I'm giving you homework on a Sunday. That's about the response I expected. I want, you to, I want you to, this week, I want you to read your Bible. I know that's shocking to hear in church. But I want you to go read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul gives this eloquent explanation of the gifts of the Spirit in our lives. I want you just to read it. Meditate on it. You'll be looking into the mirror of God's word. And then I want you to ask the Lord, God, as I read this, just if, there's, if these gifts are active in my life, stir it up. Show me. Show me where it is and how I'm supposed to use it. He, he does this. This isn't the only place he does this. He also wrote to the church in Rome, and he says, in his grace. Everybody say grace. In the Greek, that's the word charis. It's where we get the word charisma. Paul says, there's a grace on each of you God has given us different gifts for what? Come on, what's this word right here? Different gifts for? Not just thinking about them, not just meditating on them, but doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, come on, if God has given you the ability to prophesy, with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others well, serve them well. If you're a teacher, if your gift is to encourage others, if it's giving, if God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it. Do it gladly. And since you're all in love with me so far, I got one more for you. Uh, a little more homework. I want you to read Romans 12 as well. So let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's read Romans 12. Let's just get acclimated with the gifts. Let's get acclimated with what God wants to do in our lives. One more passage for you, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Everybody say the next two words. Use them to serve one another. Use them to serve one another. Y'all ready for the next slide? I want you to read 1 Peter chapter 4. Why? Because we're returning. 
We want God to restore. So we're going to return. And I for real need a musician, guys. We're returning. And as we do, God will restore our purpose. Amen? We return to the Word of God so that we can see clearly who we are. We return to the presence of God through prayer and fasting. In fact, let me show it to you here in summary. Let's, let's return to the Word of God. Let's create some rhythms around the Bible this year. Let's return to the presence of God. Let's create some rhythms in prayer and fasting this year. Because you, you can't come out of the presence of God and not have clarity about what he's trying to do in your life. Amen? And we return to the calling of God. That's our spiritual giftings. And here's what happens. When we do this, the church actually becomes the church. This is God's plan. This is plan A, to reach the world, to change the world. Let me show you one more thing as we wrap it up. Psalm, back to Psalm 126. We talked about those streams in the Negev, that prayer that we pray, restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy, and those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. See, something happens in the desert when the rain falls in the mountains and the streams fill up and flood. This, in pockets, becomes this. Or this. You end up with a word y'all are familiar with, something called an oasis. See, the, the rain would fall in the mountains, and the streams would flood, and it would refill the oasis in the desert. In fact, you would even end up with, if you look right here, you can actually see some housing. You, you would end up with, especially in ancient times, these communities that were called oasis communities. They lived in the desert near these reservoirs that would naturally be formed after the streams would flood and flow and it would refill. And when I was reading on the history of this, I saw something fascinating. Is not only would these communities be formed around the oasis and, and, and live off of the resources created by the oasis, but they would take it up on themselves as a community to be stewards of the oasis. In other words, when God brings his spirit, whenever he floods our lives with good things, when he brings blessing and miracles and anointing, when the streams fill up, what should it do? It should refill the oasis. And what is our job as, as a community of believers? To steward the resources of the oasis. Come on, how many believe we live in a dry, weary, desert-like climate spiritually in America right now? But I believe the local church is meant to be the place where when the streams of God's presence flood, the oasis fills up, not just for our enjoyment, not just for our benefit, but so we can be stewards of God's resources, stewards of God's anointing, stewards of miracles for the community around us. That's how we change the world. I'm praying for every single person who will walk into one of those recovery services in the weeks ahead. That they would have an oasis experience. That when somebody walks through our doors on a Sunday morning for the very first time, they would find people who have clarity about who they are from God's word, have spent time in the presence of God, who are exercising and stewarding our gifts and our talents and our resources so that when you come to the oasis, there's something for you. Don't worry, I'm not changing the name of the church to the oasis. There's actually one of those down the road already. It wouldn't make sense. But it is the experience the world should have when they encounter believers. Amen? Amen. Would you stand to your feet all across the room with me? Pastor Perry, you're a hunter. There's just everything in me wants to aim a gun at that stupid <laughs> furnace right now. Just, just, boom.
you bow your heads and close your eyes all across the room? I told you all I'm ADD. I can't help it. I wonder if there's anybody in the room today or watching online who maybe you just didn't, under, you just never realized how intimately God wants to be a part of your life. And you've been asked purpose questions. Who am I? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? Is there any way to make it all matter? And step one is to come into relationship with Jesus, to return to him, to make him Lord of your life, to surrender. And I just wonder if there's anybody in the room today who deep down there's something inside of you that you just, you just know, like, I got, I got to do that today. Maybe you're watching online and we can't see you, but God can. You would say, Pastor, I need to I need to give my heart to Jesus today. Make him Lord of my life. Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. If that's you, if you'd say, hey, I, I need to come into a relationship with Jesus today. Would you just wave your hand at me? Just want to know if you're in the room. You just put it up and right back down. I see it. Anybody else? I see it. Anybody else? Good job, bud. Just wait for a second. Anybody else? Just need to surrender my life to Jesus. Awesome. If you raised your hand just now, just, just repeat this prayer after me. In fact, church family, let's just say it together as we welcome people in the family of God. Just say, dear Jesus, I surrender to you. I'm a sinner. I've messed up. But you've paid the price for all those mistakes. So I receive free gift of salvation. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose from the dead. And from this day on, not only am I saved, but I'm surrendered to you, Jesus, as Lord of my life. Take over. You can have it all. Jesus' name. Amen. Can we celebrate as heaven gets bigger this morning, true life? Come on. Come on, give me your best. Amen. We got one more thing, and then we'll have a time of prayer at the end here. I know, especially Eagles fans, you probably need some prayer this morning. Steelers fans. I'm hoping this afternoon goes, okay, I don't know, though. I'm a little worried. Ravens fans are feeling okay. Where are you at? I don't, okay, I'm not, I'm not with y'all, but your coach got up there and gave God the glory last night, and that's it's really hard to root against that guy now. I'm like, what the heck, man? Would you close your eyes with me one more time? If you're a follower of Jesus today, and you would just say, hey, you know what? I, I've kind of gotten away from looking into the word to see who I really am. I've been a little bit more glance and go instead of looking carefully to see who God says I am. And listen, this is not about guilt or shame, but it is about repentance and just recognizing, you know what? I don't, I don't want to continue in that pattern. I, I need to build some rhythms in my life this year around the Word of God. If that's you this morning, would you just, just real quick, would you just wave a hand? Just say, I just I need to rebuild some rhythms around the Word of God. Would you just wave your hand at me this morning? Yep, okay, a bunch of us. What about rhythms of prayer and fasting and being intentional about getting into the presence of God? Not just at church, but throughout your week. Is there anybody who would say, you know what, I, I, I sense the Holy Spirit challenging me to, to take that up a notch in 2024. I, I need to create some rhythms of prayer and fasting. Would you wait, wait, raise your hand at me? Just wave at me. I want to see, see if you're in the, you have a whole bunch of us. And what about gifts? 
Some of us know we have some gifts. We know we have some talent. We know we have some skills. But here's the question. Is it connected to the kingdom? If if there's no kingdom element in your life, then maybe here's an opportunity today to evaluate how you're stewarding those gifts. And if you're here today and you say, hey, pastor, you know what? I I think I sense the Holy Spirit challenging me to be a little more intentional at how I discover and develop what he's trying to do in my life. Would, Would you raise your hand? Would you just wave your hand at me? Yep, so, so between those three, about 99% of us raised our hand. And then on any given Sunday, at least 1% of us are liars. So I think it's, that's a joke. I think it's all of us, isn't it? Can we just lift our hands to heaven this morning in a, a moment of fresh surrender? And we just say, Holy Spirit, would you teach us? Would you guide us? Help us to build rhythms of being in your word. We want to see ourselves accurately. We want to know who you say we are. We want to spend time with you. We want to have clarity about what you're doing in the world. And we want to be in alignment with what you're trying to accomplish. So this year, God, we commit to not just 21 days of prayer and fasting, but rhythms of prayer and fasting. We're going to spend time with you. God, we we know that you've put gifts and talents and unique abilities inside each of us. We want to steward those well. So God, show us how to connect to your kingdom. Show us how to connect those unique things that you've placed in us to your kingdom. And help us, God, that we want to steward them well. We We don't want to waste the resources of the oasis. Because when people come who need what the Oasis has, we've got to be ready. So teach us, God. Motivate us, Lord, to steward them well. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're in agreement, would you say amen? Amen. Amen. Wow. Let me hear you if you are feeling restored. Yes, that was a powerful message. Thank you, Pastor Michael. If you gave your life to Jesus this morning or you're a first-time guest uh, this morning, I want to invite you to fill out a connection card, which is located right in front of you in the seat back pocket. Uh, And that will allow us to be able to communicate with you and to encourage you on the next steps. And then uh, if you are online with us, there are some digital links that are going to be dropped for that. So if you feel led, uh, you are more than welcome to give with your tithes and offerings this morning. Again, there are envelope in front of you, or you got multiple other options with our online or through our True Life app. You can give, and you can drop those connection cards or envelopes in the kiosk out in the lobby. Guys, tonight at 5 p.m., step three is life track. This is everything that Michael was talking about, is taking all those talents and abilities and gifts and using it for the kingdom. And this is getting plugged, in, plugged into a team here at True Life to utilize those. So I encourage you to get, get plugged in and attend at 5 p.m. tonight. Um, we are in our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And we have Wednesday, just as a reminder, Wednesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 10 a.m. You're welcome to come here for an extended time of worship and prayer. This is a great time to get together. All right. I want to invite the prayer team to come forward. And if you want some uh, time of prayer, if you want to stand in agreement with someone as our worship team will close us out, um, the prayer team is welcome to come forward and have that time of prayer. All right. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over you and you guys are dismissed. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for restoring us to taking the dry parts, the deserts of our life restoring it with your spirit, Lord. God, I ask that you just bless people right now and pour out your abundant uh, joy and life and peace and love and grace and mercy throughout this week. Protect them and just direct them throughout this week. In Jesus' name, amen. See
spoke for me. Mercy spoke for me. Mercy spoke for me. It was all God to see. His death brought liberty. His death brought liberty. His death brought liberty. May
Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next week.